Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Photoshop tutorial where we're going to go through a super fast, super speedy little primer on how to use curves, why it's so powerful, why I love it, and maybe why you should love it too. Now, our tutorial today is brought to us by our generous sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a website, a blog, an online e-commerce store, or a portfolio, why don't you head over to Squarespace and check them out. I've got a link down in the bio. You can check them out. You can see the awesome awesome stuff they provide. I've got my own personal photography portfolio with Squarespace and I've had it for years and it's been uh, it's been pretty awesome. Uh, now if you do enjoy this video tutorial make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss any future photography or Photoshop or Lightroom related uh, video tutorials here on this channel and without further ado let's jump in and check this thing out. Okay here we are in Photoshop and I can hardly believe I've let the years go by without doing another new video on how to use the curves. Curves has got to be the most powerful of all the features in Photoshop. It's it's just simply remarkable what you can do with this tool. So let's just take five minutes here and learn about how this works. First of all, you're almost always going to want to get an adjustment layer because it's just better to work with adjustment layers. Uh, but this isn't a tutorial on adjustment layers versus adjustments and how they work with smart objects and all that other stuff. So I digress. Adjustment layers are just how we're going to work today. So I'm going to go window and open my adjustments panel to make sure that's there. And then I can simply select a curves adjustment layer to add one to my image. Now, before we do anything, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, your curves panel might look just a little bit different, but it all works the same. All the stuff that we're going to cover today will be the same. If you have a newer version of Photoshop and you don't see the histogram, hit the little flyout menu right here in the top right corner uh, of the panel and choose the curves display options and then tick the histogram on. The histogram, it's super helpful. Also, speaking of histogram, I'm going to go window histogram and get a histogram on screen so I can watch as I change my photo in real time. So the first thing you want to do here is click to add a point to this curve anywhere and just drag it upward to infuse brightness or drag that point down to make things a little darker. If you don't want that point you just placed or your whole curve is messed up beyond recognition, we can just drag it right off the whole panel and just like that, it's gone. Now, if we've placed multiple points and the whole thing is messed up, you can just come down here and hit the little reset button to get rid of everything and reset your curve back to its normal default state. Now, another thing that is very helpful in here is knowing that the bottom left of the curve is the black point and the top right is the white point of this photo. We can drag these points as well to radically adjust the photo. You can drag the black point upward a little bit to add sort of a quick faded effect to any photo or drag the white point downward to flatten and dull the highlights. If you push the white or black points inward toward each other, it's going to radically boost the contrast, usually not in a great way, but it is an extreme contrast adjustment. Uh, well, let's break out here for a second. And once more, I would like to thank our sponsors, Squarespace. They've chosen to sponsor us, guys. They could have chosen a million other channels, uh, but they chose to support this channel and help me continue to make these videos and turn this thing into a real big thing uh, for you and I. Now, if you are in the market for a brand new website, well, Squarespace has got you covered. They provide the most beautiful, easy to use websites that can have you set up and running in no time flat and that's not a lot of time no time flat is not very much time so whether it's a portfolio a blog a contact form or a full e-commerce store maybe all of the above you can do it quickly and easily and maybe most importantly beautifully with squarespace i have built my own personal photography site using squarespace i've had it for a few years i absolutely love it it's fast it's easy it was so easy to set up it's a total breeze to go in and update it head over to squarespace.com slash tutvid for a free trial and when you're ready to launch your website use the code tutvid uh, to save 10 percent off your first website when you choose Squarespace, well, you help support this channel, and they've been super cool with me all along. They support the videos that I create, so thank you, Squarespace, and uh, thank you for probably, hopefully, maybe, going and building your next website with Squarespace. We really appreciate them. We love them so much, uh, so go and show them a little bit of love if you're in the market for a new website. All right, let's jump back into this thing and finish checking out the curves. Now, I don't know if you can see it back there, but there is a histogram in the curves panel, and it's a representation of the brightness values of the image. The stuff to the left are the darker pixels, the middle area, all your midtones, and the stuff on the right is all the bright values of the image. The height of the histogram at any particular point is the amount of that exact tone in the photo. So by using the histogram, we can choose a specific part of the image to more heavily target by, let's say, dragging upward near the bottom of the curve. Well, we will effectively infuse the shadowy parts of the image with brightness. 
We can further target the dark areas by adding a few points and dragging the rest of the curve line back to its original position so all that brightness doesn't really affect the midtones and the highlights nearly as much. If you're having a hard time remembering all this histogram business, you can use this little finger icon. I call it the targeted adjustment tool and it's located in the top left corner of the curves panel. Simply click on a part of the image that you want to change and just drag up or down to add or remove light. You can do this all throughout the image to increase the contrast and bring some life into uh, the photo. When you're finished, click the finger icon to deselect this tool. If we take a look at our curve, we can see that by darkening the dark stuff and brightening the bright stuff, we increase the contrast. In fact, it's easy to remember that creating an S curve will boost contrast in your image. Let's take this a step further here and add a point and pull the very center of our curve back to the original curve line to ensure we have even overall brightness. Now, not only can you adjust your image's brightness with curves, but you can also infuse color. You can correct color, you can color grade, and do all kinds of just color-related stuff. Click on the RGB drop-down menu to reveal access to a few channels. You've got your RGB composite channel, a red channel, green channel, and a blue channel. After all, this is an RGB image, red, green, blue. I'm going to jump into the blue channel and drag up or down. See, each of these color channels controls two colors because each color is itself and each color has an opposite color. Red, for instance, it's the opposite of cyan. Green, well, it's that, that's the opposite of magenta. And here, blue is the opposite of yellow. So when we drag up, we add blue. But if we drag down, we add yellow. By pairing this information with the fact that we control where these colors will go, depending on where we drag points on the curve, we can choose, for instance, to add some blue to the shadows in this image while maybe pulling a little yellow right there into the highlights. Next, I'm going to head into the green channel, and I'm going to pull down in the mid-tone shadow area to add some magenta to complement our blue that we've already added to the city skyline. Remember, magenta is the opposite of green. That's why we're pulling down here. If we're getting any strange color casts, just add additional points and constrain the curve so only the shadowy areas that we want to get touched by the magenta get touched by the magenta. After that, I'll go to the red channel. And here, I'm going to pull some cyan into the brighter areas of the image to add some aqua colors to the sky of the photo. And I think I'll pull a little bit of red into the shadowy areas uh, to add red to the overall city skyline to complement the blues and magentas that we've already faded into that area of the image. Bonus tip here. You can use that same finger targeted adjustment tool to adjust color channels in specific areas of your photos just like you would have with the brightness in the RGB composite channel. Just click and drag up or drag down and it will add or remove color from that part of the photo. Now, bonus tip number two is there are a couple things here you want to avoid in curves. You want to avoid flat spots in your curve line. Flat lines suck the contrast out of your photo by converting a portion of your photo to complete 50% gray. Flat lines are really bad. You also want to avoid downhill runs. They actually flip the contrast and color of a particular part of your image, essentially making your image look like a color digital negative, which just eh, looks pretty bad. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. So you want to avoid flat spots and you want to avoid downhill runs. Other than that, go forth, seek, and destroy with this incredible tool in Photoshop. So before we shut this down, Curves is something that you absolutely do not want to sleep on. It is an incredibly powerful tool that finds uses not only in Photoshop, but also in Lightroom, Premiere Pro, and more. If you understand curves just in this one application, you're going to be able to take this knowledge and apply it across the board and use it all over the place. You'll be good to go in all these applications. So that is going to wrap it up for this one. You can see just how powerful curves are. Oh, man, it, it, it warms the very depths of my heart when I start thinking about curves. I absolutely love it. Like I said, got to be one of my favorite, at least top three tools in Photoshop, but probably my favorite. There's just so much you can do with it, and it's so valuable to know how to use curves in general uh, for just your creative life moving forward. It's really helpful. So for the curves and for editing color and tone and contrast and the color channels within curves and everything else we covered in this tutorial. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.